Good morning and welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Jakub Vanish and today I'm going to be talking about SpaceX and their third attempt of the launch of Starship. So yesterday was a very exciting day, 14th of March uh, 2024, which is a Pi Day uh, for mathematicians out there, but also it is a 22nd anniversary of the founding of SpaceX. So very significant day for them. Um, and they decided to do a so-called IFT-3, so the third launch attempt of the Starship system, which is the largest spacecraft in history of humankind. So uh, the previous two were quite let's say successful, especially the second one, which happened three months ago, um, because we, we were having basically the stage separation done quite successfully, but then both the, the booster and the, the, the upper stage, they, they were destroyed, unfortunately. So what were the aims, you know, for, for this mission? Actually to go further than in the second attempt, right? So because in the second attempt, uh, they didn't reach orbit. This time they wanted to go to the orbit, do some tests, for example, to open the cargo doors, etc. And then uh, go back to the atmosphere with the Starship, um, test the, the heat shield, and splash down somewhere in the Indian Ocean. And for the booster, they wanted to also splash down uh, right after taking off, uh, right after the separation. Um, so it was not the aim to recover uh, neither the, the booster nor the ship, right? So that's something that media often don't get correctly. Uh, because if you look today in the morning at the, the press, the media are basically saying that it was a huge failure, that SpaceX, you know, lost their ship and it was a tragedy. Quite the contrary, this was super successful. Uh, and look at this fa fa fast iteration, right? Like how fast they are able to iterate on what they're doing because just just this is the third attempt and we're already in space so let's start at the beginning basically they started uh, almost on time unfortunately there were some winds and the rain so they needed to start i think approximately one hour later Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. We were viewing a spectacular launch. Uh, the liftoff was incredible. It's getting faster and faster. Uh, takeoff didn't destroy any concrete, you know, below them. Everything was going smooth and fine. The the ship was gaining altitude and the speed at the same time. And we were also having some incredible views because now this ship is equipped with uh, three Starlink uh, terminals. So we're getting, you know, the data, live data immediately in super high quality. Uh, and that was very nice to see because one of the cameras was also on a grid fin. So that, that gives you, you know, totally new perspective, something that we've never seen before. Setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. State separation. Hot staging confirmed. Boosters now making its way back, seeing six engines ignited on ship. So the w most crucial moment again for them was the, the the booster separation, right? The separation of the upper stage from the from the lower stage, and that was just spectacular. So all the engines, you know, shut down apart from I think three that kept rolling, and then the separation was very smooth. There was, yeah, just look at this. This is this is just magnificent. To look at right like just look at the separation and then the booster just heads home you know to ideally land but in this case that was not the plan <laughs> we can wave goodbye to that booster uh, and that booster is supposed to go back uh, home and splash down into into the ocean while the the starship is having all of the raptors now firing up and still gaining altitude and speed 
Um, we're currently at almost 7,000 kilometers per hour and over 100 kilometers in altitude, right? So uh, we're going to be b burning that propellant for quite some time while we're getting some beautiful views of, of uh, that booster as well as uh, from, from uh, the cameras that are on the Starship. And, you know, especially these views are probably uh, <laughs> a little bit funny for flat earthers, right? Because this... Uh, this just like I don't know what what else do you want to see uh, as a proof because uh, this shows you that the the Earth is for sure a round <laughs> object our planet is is a globe uh, so flat earthers I'm sorry but uh, you've been living in a lie w this this is a first one right so what we can see on the left is the grid fins actually manipulating let's say the descent of of uh, the the booster so look at this. Uh, this is quite incredible. They were designed to do it. And then um, at the last moment, we should see again uh, firing of the engines that should slow down the, the booster to have a soft landing, soft splash down. Just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. We're getting a few, a few engines. As we can see, the, the it was not a soft landing, but rather a hard landing, but it landed in the ocean as intended. And I'm pretty sure that uh, SpaceX is going to be gathering a lot of data from, from this, this attempt. And then what was happening with the actual ship, the Starship, you know, gained the uh, speed of 26,500 kilometers per hour, which is just incredible, uh, 25, 26 Mach, uh, and uh, the altitude of 160 kilometers uh, or even higher, right? Um, we're getting these spectacular views and SpaceX was testing a lot of things. For example, opening and closing of the cargo doors, which will be in the future used for deploying of the Starlink satellites. Um, the opening was fine, uh, though in the, let's say in the video footage, we can see that there is still some atmosphere. You can see like haziness and fog inside of the ship, which I'm pretty sure shouldn't be there. So the opening was okay. We see how the atmosphere, you know, gets sucked out. Uh, however, when they were trying to close it, um, that didn't look so successful. Uh, another test that they were performing on flight was um, transfer of the cryogenic propellant from, from the, let's say, back side of the ship to the front side and all of these are actually uh, coming with a huge grant from nasa they will they will give them uh quite a lot of money for this I, i'm pretty sure it was something over 50 million per each test uh, that they successfully can pass currently we're looking at uh, altitude of 230 kilometers orbit <laughs> right so we're in space effectively and what we're looking at is the the largest spacecraft built by humans uh, in history of, of humanity. Uh, it's, it's just uh, incredible, incredible views. So the, the Starship was cruising at this altitude and at this speed for about 40 minutes. And then there was a time for the Starship to return back to Earth. Oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are views still... brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks <laughs> are still communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. Entering the plasma field, that's something that you never really see because uh, plasma field doesn't allow any signal to pass you know, down to Earth. Uh, so normally you wouldn't see any of this footage, but because of these Starlink systems, uh, on board of Starship, we're getting incredible high definition footage of this, and it's just spectacular. Though, as you can see, the the ship is rolling. It shouldn't likely do that. I don't think that uh, SpaceX commented on what's what's going on and why was it rolling like this. It looked uh, spectacular, right? We were we were getting these amazing views of Earth, 
uh, and we're glad for them, but uh, I don't think that it was supposed to do that. And you also see quite a lot of debris, you know, flying around the ship, quite big chunks. I don't know where this is coming from, whether from the heat tile, heat chill tiles or from something else. But yeah, that uh, that is a little bit concerning. And I'm pretty sure, again, SpaceX is getting all of the learnings from this as much as they can. And now we're finally getting, you know, to that re-entry, which is just, look at this plasma, right? Like, this this is just something that no other human, you know, besides the people that are on board of the Soyuzes and maybe the space shuttle in the past, you know, nobody else saw this. But as you can see, because of that roll, the, the heat shield is not in the proper location or in a proper position and pr proper altitude towards Earth. And unfortunately, you can see that now the most heat is getting towards kind of the inner part and bottom part of the starship. So the engines are getting the heat and there's a lot of, you know, tiny materials and uh, pumps, etc. that are likely getting destroyed. So that's not intentional, but incredible how, lo how long these, uh, these cameras actually lasted. Um, so I'm really, really glad that we were able to see something like this. In the end, the ship actually didn't make it to the ocean. It uh, likely got destroyed, uh, you know, during the descent in the atmosphere. But still, this is this is a huge success. Don't believe to media uh, that you know they are they are claiming that this was a huge failure. That you know this is another of the big mistakes of uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk and SpaceX they have. I think 20 other ships ready, you know, to launch and they're uh, intending to do six more launches this year, which means every approximately two months we should we should see a launch. And, you know, if we were able to go from where we were from the first attempt to the third one right now with this huge, huge amount of progress, just imagine where it's going to be at towards the end of the year, uh, six launches later. I, now I'm really a believer that this is the this is the ship that is going to take humanity back to back to Moon and eventually also to Mars and uh, other planets. So it's incredibly exciting. One of the most exciting things for me personally and for almost any other human being uh, right now. There's a lot of depressive stuff going on but this is this is something to be excited for um, i'm glad that we we have these uh, these incredible space races again so thanks a lot for following uh, in case there are any, any questions please let me know in the comments uh, otherwise this has been Jakub Vanish and uh, i'm glad that uh, you know you found this channel and keep coming back for more content like this um, thanks a lot and cheers everybody have a great day